Uh, did she print and give you the teaching plan? Good, because that was not. <laughs> it was written in, in a way that wasn't quite meant as a hand out. Uh, and I just realised that last night. Um, but then I'll, I'll keep referring to it here. Oh, someone's even later than me! That's a relief. Um, anyway, now, have any of you been teaching before? No. Some have, yeah. but not in China. Yeah. No. One thing you might have to contend with if you have previous teaching experience, and even when you just compare it to yourself at <coughs> different levels of school, is that Chinese students can often be more immature in many ways than Western ones. Um, the youth culture is very different. Kids are allowed to be kids for much longer than they are in the countries. When I came in here, I thought I heard a bit of a Scottish accent somewhere. Scottish person. Hi. I thought someone. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah. Oh, Tom. Not a Scottish accent. Yeah. If you or British for that matter. Uh, if you've lived in the UK, you'll notice that youth culture in China, they are allowed to be kids for longer. They're not expected to grow up as fast and as hard as they are in a lot of Western countries. Um, so even if you're going to teach at university. Don't be surprised if your students, when you ask them what they want to do in class, if you do that in your first class or at the beginning of the term, a lot of them will go, oh, play games! <laughs> <laughs> when I was in uni, if anyone had said that, they would have been laughed out of the room. <laughs> uh, but Chinese kids will do that, Chinese students, and they will also refer to each other as kids. They're in their 20s, but they will refer to each other as boys and girls which I find very, very strange. Um, still, and I, I try to drum into them that, no, you are not children anymore. Behave like adults and I will treat you like, like adults. Uh, I try to drum that into them. It sometimes sticks, sometimes it doesn't. 